Y'all, on this episode of China Uncensored, <laughs> is democracy doomed in Hong Kong? Hello and welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Loyal viewers of the show know that I've been keeping tabs on the slow motion train wreck that's happening in Hong Kong. For those of you new to the show, here's the Cliff Notes version. Hong Kong, which the British won during the Opium Wars, was returned to mainland China in 1997 under a one country, two systems rule that meant the city could keep their western style freedoms. However, they were not allowed to fully elect their own government officials, but the Communist Party promised, pinky sweared even, that Hong Kong would be able to have free elections by 2012 or 2017, whichever comes last. The question is, what does pre-elections even mean? Who knows, right? That's totally up to interpretation. The Hong Kong people think it means being able to nominate and vote on Hong Kong's chief executive directly through a popular vote. What the Communist Party means, however, was made clear this Sunday. That's when the National People's Congress, China's rubber stamp legislator, issued a unanimous decision on how Hong Kong's 2017 election should be run. All eligible Hong Kong voters will be able to directly vote for the chief executive after the nominees are approved by a committee stacked with pro-Beijing loyalists. It means that whoever the Hong Kong people elect as their leader, the Communist Party will always be in charge. After the decision was announced Sunday, thousands in Hong Kong gathered in protest. The leader of the Occupy Central movement, which had promised to occupy the financial center of Hong Kong if Beijing refused to allow full democracy, said that Hong Kong was entering a new era of civil disobedience. University and high school students from the group Scholarism promised to boycott classes starting in mid-September. On Monday, Li Fei, the head of the NPC, flew to Hong Kong to announce a decision and was booed by protesters. A tense standoff resulted in police pepper spraying some of the protesters outside the building. What happens now? Well, in six months, the Hong Kong Legislative Council will have to vote on this plan. There are enough pan-democratic legislators, though, to make sure that it won't pass. But if it doesn't pass, then Beijing says Hong Kong's 2017 election will be the same as its past elections. The chief executive will be picked directly by the nominating committee, and no one gets to vote. The party has chosen to confront Hong Kong activists directly. Some China analysts have said that this is a contrast to how Deng Xiaoping, China's former leader, most famous for brutally smashing the 1989 Tiananmen student democracy protests, handled Hong Kong. When talks began between Chinese and British officials in the 1980s about returning Hong Kong to China, the British were understandably wary. So Deng reassured them with this one country, two systems idea. Don't worry, Hong Kong will get to keep its freedoms for at least 50 years and will throw in free elections too. So the argument is that Deng handled this with subtlety and compromise, unlike Xi Jinping and today's Communist Party. But what they're missing is this. Deng Xiaoping, Xi Jinping, they've been playing the same game the entire time. A game that's taken 30 years to show the Hong Kong people just how badly they've been played. One country, two systems, was just a way for the Communist Party to get its foot in the door. Then they could slowly erode Hong Kong's freedom until Hong Kong is completely controlled by the party. Sure, it looks like one country, two systems, but that doesn't even matter because the party controls both of the systems. This is what party leaders had in mind the entire time. They're playing the long game. Now, the people of Hong Kong aren't taking this sitting down. Many are predicting increased civil unrest in the next six months. But will the party back down? They did once in 2003 when half a million Hong Kongers marched against Article 23, a proposed amendment to Hong Kong's constitution that would enable the Communist Party to enact draconian security measures that were similar to those in mainland China. Measures like banning organizations banned in the mainland or arresting people for inciting subversion. But that was 10 years ago, and the stakes are even higher this time around. So what do you think? Is democracy doomed in Hong Kong? Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time, and good luck in Hong Kong.